Athena looked almost sorry for me. Kronos knows your flaw, even if you do not. He knows how to study his enemies. Think, Percy, how has he manipulated you? First, your mother was taken from you. Then, your best friend, Grover. And now, my daughter, Athena. She paused, disapproving. In each case, your loved ones are being used to lure you into Cronus's traps. Your fatal flaw is personal loyalty, Percy. You do not know when it is time to cut your losses. To save a friend, you would sacrifice the world. In a hero of the prophecy, this is a very, very dangerous thing. I balled my fists. It's not a flaw. Just because I want to help my friends. The most dangerous flaws are those which good are, are good in moderation, she said. Evil is easy to fight. Lack of wisdom, that is very hard indeed. I wanted to argue, but I found I couldn't. Athena was pretty darn smart. I hope the council's decisions prove wise, Athena said. But I will be watching, Percy Jackson. I do not approve of your friendship with my daughter. I do not think it is wise for either of you, and you should begin to waver in your loyalties. She fixed me with her cold, gray stare, and I realized what a terrible enemy Athena would make ten times worse than Ares of Dionysus, or maybe even my father. Athena would never give up. She would never do something rash or stupid just because she hated you. And if she made a plan to destroy you, it would not fail. Percy! Annabeth said, running through the crowd. She stopped when she saw who I was talking to. Oh, Mom! I will leave you, Athena said. For now. She turned and strode through the crowds, which parted before her as if she was carrying a kiss. Was she giving you a hard time? Annabeth asked. No, I said. It, It's fine. She studied me with concern. She touched a new streak of gray in my hair that matched hers exactly. Our painful souvenir from holding Atlas's burden. There was a lot I wanted to say to Annabeth, but Athena had taken that confidence out of me. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. I do not approve of your friendship with my daughter. So, Annabeth said, what did you want to tell me earlier? The music was playing. People were dancing in the streets. I said, I, uh, was thinking we got interrupted at Westover Hall and I think I owe you a dance. She smiled slowly. All right, seaweed brain. So I took her hand and I don't know what everybody else heard, but to me, it sounded like a slow dance. A little sad, but maybe a little hopeful too. Chapter 20. I get a new enemy for Christmas. Before I left Olympus, I decided to make a few calls. It wasn't easy, but I found my quiet corner, my quiet fountain in the corner of the garden, and I sent an iris message to my brother Tyson. I told him about our adventures and Bessie. He wanted to hear every detail about the cute baby cow serpent. I assured him that Annabeth was safe. Finally, I got around to explaining how the shield he made me last summer had been damaged in a manticore attack. Yay, Tyson said. It means it was good. It saved your life. It sure did, big guy, I said. But now it's ruined. Not ruined, Tyson promised. I will fix it next summer. The idea picked me up instantly. I guess I hadn't realized how much I'd missed having Tyson around. Seriously, I asked. They'll let you take time off? Yes, I made 2,741 magic swords, Tyson said proudly, showing me the newest blade. The boss says good work. He will let me take the whole summer off. I will visit camp. We talked for a while about war preparations and our dad's fight with the old sea gods and of all the cool things we could do together next summer. But then Tyson's boss started yelling at him and he had to go back to work. I dug out my last golden drachma and made one more iris message. Sally Jackson, I said, Upper East Side, Manhattan. The white mist shimmered, and there was our, my mom at our kitchen table, laughing and holding hands with her friend, Mr. Blowfish. I felt so embarrassed, I was about to wave my hand through the mist and cut the connection, but before I could, my mom saw me. Her eyes got wide. She let go of Mr. Blowfish's hand real quick. Uh, Paul, you know what? I left my writing journal in the living room. Would you mind go getting it for me? Sure, Sally. No problem. He left the room, and instantly my mom leaned towards the iris message. Percy, are you all right? I'm, uh, fine. Um, how's that writing seminar going? She pursed her lips. It's fine, but that's not important. Tell me what happened. I filled her in as quickly as I could. 
She sighed with relief when she heard that Annabeth was safe. I knew you could do it. I'm so proud. Yeah, well, I better let you get back to your homework. Percy, I... Paul and I...